Okay, this video is going to show you how to replace a laptop screen in your Toshiba satellite computer. Uh, you might have issues with flickering, your screen might be flickering, uh, you could have a, a, a crack down the middle, um, it might not physically come on. Uh, if it doesn't physically come on and you still hear the fan going in your processor and all that, it could be your screen, um, but it might not be. Um, so this is the, this is the foolproof method is, is if your screen's got a crack and you can still see light or if you see lines going through it or you see something in your screen. Um, best way to, to test if you um, the best way to test if you if you uh, if your screen is broken and you don't see anything on the screen you could actually hook it up to a regular laptop or a, re a regular desktop monitor um, through the VGA port. As you can see this one, that's the VGA port right there. And you would you would do it just like any other desktop computer. You hook up the blue VGA to your um, to your uh, desktop monitor. And when you turn it on and the monitor is on, you would just basically click function and F5 and then it should come up on the screen. If you get a picture on your desktop screen then it's a good possibility that it should, your, your, your screen on your laptop needs to be replaced and it's not like a CPU or a video problem. Alright, uh, this procedure is extremely easy. A lot of people throw their hands up when their screen goes bad and they think there's nothing they can do about it or they'll have to pay two, three hundred dollars to get it replaced. That is not the case. You could buy laptop screens for any computer, Toshiba's, HP, Dell's, uh, brand new sometimes, but used on eBay and Amazon. I think eBay is the best place to get them. You can get them as low as 30 bucks. And the best way to find your laptop screen is to take your broken one out and read the model number on the back. Plug it into eBay search, go to buy it now, lowest first, and uh, make sure you're getting one that's not broken. It'll say used or new. Uh, make sure, read all the all the the lettering on the ad make sure it's not it doesn't have a line through that one um, and and then order it usually it's 30 40 bucks and you know it, it, it would take me five minutes to replace the screen but most people would probably you know if they've never done it before it would take maybe 10 15 minutes um, alright so we're looking at this one this particular model is it's a Toshiba satellite um, D655 no I'm sorry D665 and way to find that out on the back of your computer it's usually in a little little tag like this uh, this one's below this the um, the license but if you could see here it'll say right here and usually you just want to go by the first four four numbers uh, where is it yeah, right here on the top it'll say satellite and then it'll say this says A665 and then it'll go dash in another four numbers. You can ignore that. Just go by, go by the first four digits, 8665. And this method will work to replace your screen on any Toshiba laptop. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of satellite models out there. Now, the four places to initially look at is on all four corners of your screen bezel. This plastic thing that goes around is called a, is called a bezel. All right. There's going to be usually four screws that hold the bezel in. So the first thing we're going to do is pop this bezel off. And what you're going to do is you're going to look for either screws, and as you can see here, there's screws, screw holes here, or you're going to look for little. It's called end caps. As you can see here, that'll cover the screw. As you can see that, and that usually just fits right over the screw. And by the way, the only two tools that you're going to need for this is a, is a Phillips head screwdriver and a small flathead screwdriver like this. Or you can use a steak knife. Um, but what you're going to do is, is, if you see these little end caps, and they're usually little rubber things, you're just going to take your, you're going to take your, um, you're going to take your uh, flathead and you're going to peel it off. It should pop out exposing a Phillips head screw which this one already fell off so and you're going to go around and you're going to take those off and check and see if you got some here on the bottom and then from there you're just going to unscrew 
the Phillips. And I went ahead and done the other two on the other two bottom corners. As you can see there, there's one right there, and of course one right here. And those actually had a little end caps on them as well that I had to take out, take off with a, a little flathead. Now sometimes it, there won't be any screws or or um, or end caps, and that if it's flush and you don't see anything, then you could just pop it off, pop off the whole bezel off from there. Rare in rare cases, you might actually see some right here in the middle, but those are usually for the older Toshibas. Um, all right, and then once you do that, you can be aggressive and just pull up. My recommendation, so you don't crack your bezel, is to go one length at a time. You could use your small Phillip head or steak knife to go around. It should just pop out. Sometimes you have to be a little bit forceful. But if you do it right and you take all the screws, you're not going to break anything. And then some places that you need to be careful is a little hinge. As you can see, there, there's two hinge covers. Sometimes you have to go underneath it and pry it open at the same time. And pull it out. Toshibas are real good as, uh, about this part. It's pretty easy. Alright, so we got these two screws out and sometimes if there's no screw or no end cap exposed on the bezel, then most likely there'll be one here and here. So you gotta relook your look at your four corners again and make sure there's no screws there. There's no here, not here. Now, what you're gonna do is gently take your screen and make sure you don't accidentally strip your Wi-Fi cable. All right. There's going to be four screws. Well, I'm sorry, two or three screws on each end. As you can see there, there's one here, and there would be one right here, and one right here. Same thing on the other end. So you're going to go around, and you're going to unscrew those four to um, six screws. All right, that one dropped. All right, we do this other corner. And again, I would, I would go down the line and get all the screws. And what you're gonna do is you wanna gently peel it back. If there's a webcam, uh, webcam ribbon, I would recommend going ahead and taking your webcam off. It should usually just pull out like that. Alright, and there should be just one little ribbon exposed right here. Alright, and it's usually taped on. And what you do is just take this tape off. And what you want to do is you want to gently pull this, pull this out. And that pops out right there. See there? And that exposes this is your broken screen. As far as the model number, like I was talking about earlier in the video, as you can see there, you can try both of these numbers, but it's this one here. The L, L T's and Tom, N is and Nancy, 156, A's and Apple, T's and Tom, 24 dash, T's and Tom, 01. And you'd plug that into eBay, go to buy it now, lowest first, and get the, the cheapest one that you can. I would recommend used. There's no need to put a brand new one in there, unless there's a great deal on one. And what you want to do, when you get your brand new screen back in, you're just going to completely reverse everything that I just did. You know, you're going to put the uh, attach the the video ribbon back on. You're going to put this on there. Make sure your webcam's fastened, and then do your three screws here, three screws there, or two, and then just reverse everything you just did. And it's very very easy. I'd recommend doing it. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, the very beginning, make sure you take the battery out of your computer just in case there's any connection power or whatever. Just go ahead and do it for safety. You won't hurt you, most likely, but it's always be better to be safe than sorry. Alright, thanks for watching.
I do appreciate it.